afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you to the scientific committee. And thank you, Dr. Sudipta, for letting me speak on behalf of uh, Dr. Ashok Nanda. He was not able to come. So bringing the smile back in post-operative surprises. So Sudipta has made my uh, life a lot more easier by telling most of the basic things. We cannot ignore the corneal surface. We cannot ignore the tear film. So there are certain basic things we need to uh, check in and rule out before we really think about intervening on the length, length, length surface or on the corneal surface. So for refractive sur surprises, we can have lens-based corrections and corneal-based corrections. Uh, that is LASIK, PRK, or LRI. And uh, it's very important to distinguish whether we want to do a corneal-based correction or a lens-based correction because for lens-based corrections, it is earlier, uh, we intervene earlier. And cornea-based correction, we at least uh, let the refraction settle for at least three months before thinking of any inter inter intervention. And before we do all this, it's very, very important to counsel the patient doubly, triply, how many times you can, because they have to be very realistic even after a second intervention. So they should not think that everything will go back to perfect uh, perfection after a second intervention. And we must be doubly sure about uh, our evaluation because sometimes not all these patients are your own patients. Sometimes they come back post-operatively from other surgeons. And then we must make the right decision for correction. So now eye trace makes our life very uh, much simpler because it helps us to distinguish. Uh, that's the only, uh, only device that helps us to distinguish between what is the uh, echoes due to uh, reflections due to cornea and what is the disturbance due to the lens. So it actually differentiates between the two. No other device can help us uh, do that. That doesn't mean that people who don't have access to eye trace uh, should not attempt it. So now let's uh, take three case-based scenarios. The first case is the patient who had undergone a uh, toric IOL implantation. Now we see that uh, the patient is left with a residual of a 1.8 diaphragm sphere and a minus 1.12 diaphragm cylinder at uh, 88 degrees. So what do we do? Like, is this a wrong choice of IOL or is this an IOL rotation or what is it? So do we go for a lens-based correction or a cornea-based correction? Now we see that this patient has some amount of lower order aberrations and a higher order aberrations. And then doing a toric alignment shows that when we have a 60, uh, when we do a 60, when we, uh, if we subjected the IOL to a 65 degree rotation, uh, he would have a lot of reduction in the cylinder, but still he would be left with a 1.33 diopter sphere and a 0 0.05 uh, diopter cylinder, which wouldn't help much. So in this case, instead of rotating the IOL, we have to go for a cornea-based procedure and we have to go for a wavefront-guided LASIK or a PRK as the case is. Now coming to the second case scenario. Here, a patient with a mature cataract underwent a cataract surgery with a multifocal IOL, IOL implantation, which I would never do. Uh, I would, uh, of course, do it if the patient is willing to take equal risk. Now we see that the patient is left with a uh, refraction of a plus 3.5 and a minus 1 diopter cylinder. Now in this case, you see the patient has uh, quite a high amount of astigmatism. The foma and the trifoil is quite high. So in this case, if uh, it would be so much simpler to just do a cornea-based procedure for a multifocal that is lying uh, well uh, settled inside the bag. But if in this case we were to do a cornea-based procedure, then it wouldn't help because he still has a lot of higher order aberrations. So in that case, we would go for, uh, in that case, we would go for uh, a, 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 a cornea-based procedure, sorry. Now coming to third case scenario, here we have a case with a toric IOL implantation and uh, he still has a minus one diopter residual cylinder. Now coming to the uh, aberrometry, we can see that the corneal aberrometry and the lens ab uh, aberrometry are both equal. So in this case, if an uh, alignment of just the corneal cylinder, realignment of the 12 degree uh, rotation reduces the corneal cylinder and uh, leaves the patient just a minus 0.1 diopter sphere. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aishwarya.